Hey, my name is Uzair and today we're going to learn how to make smooth 3D camera movement animation in DaVinci Resolve like you see in most of the documentary style videos nowadays. So without wasting any time, let's get right into it. First step, we'll make a fusion composition. Make sure it's the same FPS as your timeline and drag it like this. Next step, we'll go into the fusion and we'll drag our background node like this. Check the resolution is correct then we'll grab our text 3d node like this and with that we'll grab a merge and a renderer 3d so we'll drag these three nodes connect them like this we'll also bring in a camera node connect it like this so now we have our node tree setup background i would like to add some grid grid background type not just a normal one so we'll add grid effect and we'll adjust its setting make sure this one is all the way to zero and we'll adjust this according to our liking and we'll reduce the blend like this maybe change the background color to something more appealing i think this looks nice so now we have our background we'll add some text okay so first time when you when you add a camera node to the merge you you will not see anything that's because the camera is too zoomed in so as you can see here so we'll drag it out like 1.65 so it will fit into the canvas like this now adjust the size of the text make sure you adjust the size from here and not from uh, here merge or maybe from transform don't do it from here because then it will make the text pixelated so every time you resize the text make sure to do it from here like this so we have our text node then we'll copy this node and paste it again and connect it to merge and we'll type something else here we are our second text i'll just go through and write all, down all the text okay so now we have all our text nodes and uh, we will just add transform node to each one of them so we can change the position of them we'll change the z-axis according to our liking like this so the learn is near and the second one which is smooth so we'll add transform node here and adjust it accordingly let me disable these so we can understand what's happening so this one is point maybe it's at zero like this let's do 0 0.1 this one is point 0.2 you can see it like this how far away they are Let's bring it back like this and then we'll add another transform 3d node here actually just keep it here and copy it from here so if you want to connect the transform node between the nodes what you have to do is hold shift so i'll take it from here hold shift and then gets connected so we'll adjust its position too so i think 3d i'll put 3d right here like this and then we'll increase the decrease Z axis like this so it gets far away from these two because the camera will be moving around between them again we'll do this for every single one so make sure you hold shift connect like this and then enable your text node and then adjust the parameters like this Okay, so what I'm doing with this fusion, because I want this to be the last word of the whole thing. So we'll drag it behind the camera like this. So it disappears. So the camera will do all its movement right here and then it zooms back to fusion, the last word. And the camera will start from learn, then move to the other text. So for that, we'll use our camera 3D. I'll add a transform 3D like this. Don't do the animation in the camera, do it in the transform 3D. So first animation will go from 0 to 15 perhaps and we'll enable all these three parameters from the translation not the rotation the translation one and we'll add keyframes at frame 0 to we'll come to the 15 we'll focus on learn like this make sure it's center also you can control g here like click once in the window and then control g to open this crosshair type thing so you can know it's in the center like this so here's our first moment which is learn okay, so for the keyframes so first you will like select all of them it will be like this select them all 
press S and then F to smooth them and flat them. Next thing we'll press T, select them all, press T. So here we have, it is like a speed graph from After Effects. So if you move this like this, it is graph value graph we'll do it like this it is like a speed graph so if you do it like this all three will move at the same time which is a lot easier than adjusting individual ones which which will be a lot more inconsistent so i'll prefer it this way so here you'll have the two values same 33 and what we will want is you'll want it to be slow at the start and then fast at the end so what we'll do is we'll increase the ease out so it will be a lot slower in the starting let's do 50 50 and then increase it to like 35 let's see how it looks see it looks good but let's do it 20 so we'll bring the keyframes here see the animation on this overlay the vertical flow and all these three dabs opened up is too much easy because you can always adjust your keyframes line and controls everything but if you do the default one it is way too hard let me show you this is the default one you come here you select a keyframe and spline you can do the both but see how much space you got left here almost nothing you can see nothing so you'll have to close one and then open only the spline and then select one and then animate it and then do other stuff so it is it will be a lot more harder to so just switch to the vertical flow you can also go here mid flow you can select mid flow and it will automatically enable this what you will do is close this like this and then add a keyframe and then increase their height and decrease this and save it as a preset like uh, here save layout as preset so we'll did our first animation 20 frames very smooth movement will not be smoother if you do all your animation in this one transform so like if i click here and then add another one here and then go to 40 and then adjust it like this it will not be smooth because the animation is see here it cuts off for a split second like here it stops and then it slowly moves forward what we want is consistent movement so for that we'll cancel this and we'll add another transform 3d node like this and we'll do the second movement in this one so i know it will be a lot like messy but uh, what you can do is select all these like this and then add underlay like this and extend it maybe assign a color to it like purple and rename it press here and then press f2 and name it animation corner like this and then hold enter and you select all the keyframes all the nodes and then you will know from far behind that this is your animation corner you can go straight right into it and look at these numbers three four maybe re remember them so next time if you want to make some adjustments you know the exact number on which transform 3d you will you are willing to make adjustments you can also rename them like you can rename them anim1 and then it's anim2 like this will be a lot more easier so we'll start from like five frames behind the first one was ending at 20 so we wanted to start from a little behind like 15 we'll add our keyframes like this and then we'll go to 40 because we're doing every 20 frames one moment or maybe we'll have to reduce it later but for now we'll just do it like this so we have learned and then we have our smooth bring it to center like this select all keyframe press s then press f and then increase this to 50 and 35 like we did previously so here we have our smooth movement see I think the starting is very fast. I think we will have to adjust the starting of it. So let's adjust the starting of both. So instead of 50, we'll do like 80 perhaps. And same here. Come here, select all, and then bring it to 80 like this. Or maybe we'll reduce it to two frames like this. So two frames before 20, 18th frame. We'll start the second animation on 18th frame. See, now it's smooth. It stops for a while but it doesn't stops completely it's still moving see still moving right here that's what we want let's add another transform node rename it and then the previous one was ending at 40 so we'll go two frames behind and start it from here mark the keyframes go to like 60 select all and then let's bring the 3d in the center zoom it in zoom distance like this here we have our 3d we can do the same select all s f and then bring it to 80 and 35 I'll do it for all the movements and then I'll come back. Okay, so I have made all the animations and I changed the graph. So I'll tell you the updated graph. So it's like 150 like this 150 for all of them. 
so you will get a movement like this now we'll missing two things actually three things first we'll need a motion blur on this and second we need some depth of field so when the text zooms out like this like see on the fusion rest of the text behind it is blurred out so we'll use depth of blur for that i'll tell you how to use it in a minute but first of all what we're going to do is decorate our background a little bit because it looks too plain for now so what we'll do is we'll add first of all vignette like this and then we'll have our grid right here maybe add some soft glow like this or maybe let's separate the grid because it will add the glow on the background too we just we just want this soft glow on grid only so connect these two actually bring it here bring them here like this so what we'll do is we'll connect the yellow line of this grid to background so it takes the source from here and then process here and then goes back to merge so it will be something like this so now whichever effect you apply here will only be applied to the grid not to a background node let's add a little bit of glow however you want zoom in a little bit adjust our glow parameters like this and then let's go to vignette and increase the softness decrease the anamorphism and then adjust the size according to your liking something like this should be good see how much difference it, it makes it look like cinematic we'll adjust the glow again for liking see the glow adds liveliness to the background decrease it a little bit more be like this you can add the color correction too if you have some footage like this is only plain color you want footage you can maybe you want to change the hue or anything this looks cool let's increase the contrast a little bit decrease the gamma you see it makes a lot of difference so now we have everything ready we'll go to the render 3d settings and then we'll enable the motion blur increase the quality to like 6 or 8 and shutter angle to 280 well, now we have added the motion blur let's go and add depth of blur so for that you need to change it to hardware renderer so it is a lot smoother and you will get you will get this option you will enable this and this and then adjust it according to your liking another tip i would like to give you is this if your fusion is lagging so what you can do is come here in this portion right click and then disable high quality motion blur and enable proxy then come to this corner right here and then right click you will get this option from here you can decrease the quality as much as you like so i'll do like eight so now it will play back smoother with all the effects including it will still play back smoother and then will, when you are adjusting the colors and everything you can just disable it so let me find out the correct settings for this and i'll tell you okay so it was some problem with my renderer 3d i enabled the software again and then enable hardware again and it fixed it, the problem the text problem so these are the settings i'll i, I find the most suitable for this type of animation so I'll copy these and then come to the camera and then adjust the focal plane length like right here this this one so i found that the 0.5 works fine for me because the backgrounds get blurred and the main text highlights like this so let's check it throughout the video if it's working the, everything is like blurred in the background so what we'll do is we'll revisit every single last keyframe and check if anything is blurred out smooth is good and what about this 3d you can see it it's visible come to the camera it's visible too then animation 5 it's visible too perhaps we can try to adjust the c distance a little bit more then we'll come here in is like very close that's why it's blurred out so adjust it like this and then we have our fusion so everything is like perfect now so we'll enable high quality and motion blur again and i'll show it to you when rendered so that's it for today make sure to like the video and subscribe to my channel it will help a lot and if you got friends that are learning video editing and making animations like these you can share this video with them too see you soon